very pleased to be with you, if only virtually, for this uh, extremely important conference dedicated to issues of central significance for the modern world, neoliberalism, educational practice, how they've developed, what the problems are, what the prospects are, what we can do to overcome them. So I'll just start with a couple of words about the background. Uh, neoliberalism, as you know, was spearheaded by the United States and Britain, Reagan and Thatcher, then spread elsewhere, has two versions. There's an official version. There's actual practice. As is usual, the two of them are quite different. The official version calls for reliance on markets and small government. Actual practice has been almost the opposite. Uh, growth of government, massive intervention in markets, radical intervention designed for the benefit of great wealth and corporate power. It's basically a form of class war. And the results are what you would expect from such doctrines. They've been studied in the United States carefully. Rand Corporation, major quasi-government corporation, studied transfer of wealth from working people in the middle class to the top 1% over the past 40 years. They estimate about $50 trillion. That's class war on an impressive scale. Much the same has been true in Britain with austerity policies and the like. And there are similar effects in one way or another around the world. Well, education has not been spared for a very good reason. If you're gonna carry out an assault on the population, you have to destroy their means of defense. And one of the means of defense is critical thinking, uh, access to information, understanding, ability to look at the world around you and draw accurate conclusions from it, tearing away veils of illusion. In the United States, schools and colleges have been radically defunded. Well, tuitions, have exploded. A business model has been imposed. Schools should be, should concentrate on training for the job market. They should eliminate luxuries like arts and humanities, even school nurses in the lower schools. Uh, students should be trained uh, to study for tests, teaching for tests at school. Don't think. Don't pursue your own interests. Don't inquire into something you might like to pursue. Study to pass the test. These are ideas that were ridiculed in the 18th century, uh, compared with pouring water into a vessel and letting a little bit of it drip out. Uh, we all know how it works. All of us have had the experience of taking a course you weren't interested in, studying to pass the exam, getting a good grade, a couple weeks later forgetting what the course was about. It's called teaching to test. That's the model for the schools, uh, for universities and colleges, training for the job market, uh, the uh, eliminating all the side luxuries, arts and humanities. For the universities, it means imposing a business model. Layer after layer of administration is established, but cost effectiveness for instruction. So replace tenured faculty by low paid, easily replaceable adjuncts and graduate students. In England, pretty much the same policies. One leading educational critic, Stefan Collini, described the policy as one to turn 
first-class universities into third-class commercial institutions? Well, the goals are no secret. The intellectual leader of the movement, Milton Friedman, was quite explicit in his opposition to public education. Shouldn't exist, he argued. Secretary of Education, Secretary of Education for the Trump administration said the same thing. We shouldn't have public schools. And on principled grounds, there should be no public goods altogether. No health care. Uh, you're out on your own. If you're rich, very rich support in society, everybody else make out somehow. Well, mass public education was one of the great American contributions to democracy, was well ahead of Europe. There are fine public universities established from the 19th century. They're in the forefront of science, technology, scholarship, humanities, providing high quality education to a broad public. And they've been under severe attack for the past 40 years. It's part of the more general assault on the social order. And you can see the effects. They're all too clear. There's widespread anger, resentment, contempt for institutions. It's all fertile terrain for demagogues, serious threats for survival of the fragile plant of democracy, which has to be nourished or it will disappear. Sound educational systems extending to education throughout life. These are the foundations on stones for a healthy democracy and for an informed, engaged public prepared to confront the very severe crises that lie ahead. So the task you're now facing and undertaking is of enormous significance and it's essential one if there's to be any hope for decent survival in this troubled world of ours. Good luck in what you're doing.